with dating and relationships, sometimes it is the type of thing that uh, there is that stigma or somebody had somebody that knew somebody that died from cancer and oftentimes it's obviously, it's, it's a delicate uh, issue. Uh, you usually get one of two responses, oh, that's great, or oh, I feel so bad. And usually I like to hear the, oh, that's great because I am a survivor and it's something that's very much a part of me. Whereas, uh, oh, that's so bad, I mean, that's in my past, it happened, I mean, it, it's sort of the, uh, it makes you stronger, definitely. And then it comes out that, yes, I am a cancer survivor, I was diagnosed when I was six, and uh, I was, I've been out of, in, out of treatment since I was nine. So I'm 26 now, so basically, uh, that's a good long time. And then also, I mean, it's interesting, the reactions you get, I mean, some people, uh, some people just accept it and then others are kind of well and then all of a sudden you, you don't get a call back or something <laughs> you wonder what it is i mean if it's if it's your personality or the fact that you had cancer and you, you never know since i was so young uh, they there's always development uh, issues and that type of thing and actually i didn't find out until sophomore year in college uh, I'd always had, uh, obviously, running with soccer and that. I was a goalkeeper, so I didn't necessarily do all the running that everyone else did, but uh, we still did a, a good bit, and our coach didn't. I mean, we run sometimes five, six miles a day, and uh, it was the type of thing that I thought it was just kind of normal. I just wasn't in tip-top shape, uh, but it was actually at, at school they did a something uh, like a health day where basically they were testing lung capacity with smokers and non-smokers, and they asked if I had ever smoked. I said, no, no, thank you. I already had cancer. And basically they said, well, your, your, your lung capacity isn't as high, and I couldn't figure out what it was. They did further tests and they did x-rays, and my lungs actually didn't uh, fully develop. Um, and I think that was um, as a result of some of the cancer. So it's the type of thing that now I know, but I just have to kind of work that much harder when I'm uh, uh, working uh, on soccer, playing soccer and playing other sports. My brother and I are a year apart, and we're best of friends and everything, and he never really said anything, but it was always there. There was a lot of attention focused on me and that. My sister was two years old when I was diagnosed, and there definitely was, I mean, like issues socially and that type of thing that uh, through the years that my parents, I mean, my mom and dad were with me, I'd say 99% of the time when I was in the hospital, and pretty much I was in the first 45 days and in a week, out a week for several months. So obviously they spent a lot of time with me. And obviously, um, usually my mom was there during the day. She teaches two and three year olds, so she pretty much would switch off, and that. Uh, and then my dad would t he took off for a good bit of work, and luckily everybody um, where he worked uh, they they donated sick days and that type of thing. So it was it was great support wise. But with my sister, uh, she, there there were a lot of issues, uh, and she was I mean like when I'd go off to camp, I remember she she even saying that she wanted to have cancer so that she could go to camp. And I was like, trust me, Katie, you don't want to <laughs> have it. I mean, if you go to any camp there anything else, but uh, that, that's one thing you don't want to want to have. My name is Terry Hillary, and I'm a 20-year leukemia survivor.